I bought an SP meter because I think it's helpful for debugging electronics that are not charging anymore or maybe faulty batteries in electronics. Yeah, it was pretty cheap. As you can see, it's USB-C in both size input and output. And it has two buttons. And it just came with this user manual. You can see you can change the functions with one button and rotate the screen with the other button. It's pretty straightforward. And the other part is in Chinese. I also bought some adapters, micro USB to USB-C and USB-C to micro USB. So I can test different cases. I will also make a comparison with my old USB meter. And let's see how it goes and if it's efficient or not. So firstly, it will light up. I bought the black and white one. There is also a color one available, but I, I don't need it to be colorful. So that's why I bought the cheapest version because the other colored version, it's like 12 or not. This one was seven, I think, bucks and the other one is 12. So you can see here it's 4 volts, 1.8 amps, and almost 9 watts taken through this phone. No bad current, 1.8 amps, color style brightness, wait a second. <laughs> Let's go back for a second. So if we have here color style and this is flipping the screen so no way okay so i bought the cheaper version and got basically the same thing i can't believe they are charging five bucks just to to press a few buttons and modify the settings I will show you the product page at, at the end of the video. Okay, so 1.8 apps and almost 9 watts uh, for this phone. Let's see how the old USB meter, what it shows. So let's see the old one. One amp and 5.11 volts. Maybe yeah, because I think this is what the charger is outputting, not what the phone is getting. So somehow it makes sense. Or not. Okay, let's see for this dual 18650 battery charger and we will need the adapters first USB-C to micro USB female and male and then a USB-C female to micro USB no sorry uh, USB-C male to micro USB female so I'll plug the cable because this is a smaller charger So we have 5.2, not taking any current. Plugging in 4.6 with 1.6 amps and 7.3 watts. So the phone is taking 9 watts the charger is taking 7 watts 
with 1.6 amps on the charger and 1.8 amps on the phone. No bad current. Okay, so it's pretty useful. So we have 4.4 and 1.6. Let's see with the old USB meter. So with the old one, we have again 5.15 volts and 1.6 amps, which is pretty accurate. Because I, I think 5.16 is what the charger gives. And the battery chargers, the battery charger need 1.6 amps. So I think it's kind of accurate. Now let's see the values for a laptop, 20 volts, and we have to take into consideration that this laptop has its battery full, so that's why we don't have a lot of current throw. Yeah, so I think it's pretty useful. 20 volts, 0.8 and 16 watts 23 it depending as i said the battery is already full for this laptop so yeah it's pretty useful for debugging electronics that are not charging and it's really small it fits into even into your wallet so you can just uh, you can't lose it in your pocket if it fixed in into your wallet. It's much smaller than my old version that I had, and I think it's it's pretty useful for the money that I paid. Ah, oh, but I also remember uh, that I I bought an USB-C cable with a meter in it. I don't really trust this one. I don't really like cables which have other colors than the ones that should be uh, ESO style. So orange, I, I don't think this is a PD cable. I think it's just a reg regular USB-C cable, so it shows zero watts. And for the charger, we have eight watts, which I think it's okay. We had 7.3, if I remember correctly. So 7.38. Should be okay. Let's see with the phone also. I think we had nine for the phone. Something like that. One, two, three, nine. Okay. Well, somehow accurate, but it doesn't show a lot of values. So I don't think it's pretty useful for the bugging. And I, I won't use it very much because I don't trust it. And when it comes to, to cables, it's the same story as for the PC use on a computer. So let's see the product page for the meter. As I said, I bought this one for seven bucks and the colored one was 12 bucks. So it doesn't make sense. They are charging five bucks 
just to push a few buttons. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I don't even know if I would use the color uh, version. Yeah, I think it's more straightforward to use the black and white one, but oh well, at least I, I didn't pay the full price. But I saw in the reviews that a lot of people were buying the colored version and some of the people were saying that they bought the black and white version and they received the colored one. So I guess for some they just forgot to, to press the buttons to set it as a black and white color. I mean, yeah, it depends on what you want. Somehow it, it makes sense, right? You will buy a black and white version, you will get a black and white version. If you buy a colored one, you will get a colored one. It's regardless if you will change the settings in the future or not. But they can ch charge you extra if you want the colored ones from the beginning. So let's see the specifications. Why is it 99999 everywhere? I don't think this is accurate. I think 0, 0600 watts. <laughs> okay. I, I won't say anything about this. Uh, so 999 this this number, I, I think it's not accurate. I think this is the biggest number that fits the screen, honestly. I think that's the, the highest that the screen can, can reach for values. So that's why they put that the highest number. I don't think it's capable of reaching those values, but oh well, it's a marketing strategy, right? Also, as it was for the black and white screen or multicolored, which is basically the same product. Okay, hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to the channel and see you at the next one. Cheers.